Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Eurostat's webinar on transport statistics. Uh, I'm John Berinda, working here at Eurostat on macroeconomic statistics, and I have the pleasure to be the moderator for our webinar this afternoon. Uh, indeed, the event uh, will be recorded, uh, so just to let you know this in advance. And we will also be using uh, uh, a way of uh, getting your questions to us, which we will answer after uh, the initial presentations. We're using a system called Slido. Uh, you can see it uh, displayed on the screen here, so at slido.com. If you enter the hashtag with the number, which is 3465200, then you'll be able to actually ask questions at, at any time during the webinar, and we will get, get to them at the end of the, of, of the webinar. So I hope that uh, you'll be able to be active in your questions. Um, we're very much looking forward to them. Um, I'd like to then introduce our first speaker for the webinar this afternoon, and this is Vivica Palm. Vivica is the director at Eurostat of Sectoral and Regional Statistics. Uh, over to you, Vivica. Thank you very much, John, and uh, welcome to all. Uh, I'm very pleased to be part of this second seminar of Transport Statistics. My name is Vivica Palm. I'm the director for Sectoral and Regional Statistics here at Eurostat. And uh, I'm very proud to be uh, being here with you and, and to make a short introduction to what is going to come afterwards. So uh, transport is, as, as you know, a very important sector of the economy and it affects our daily life. This is also shown through statistics because we do need a lot of statistics on transport and it's also something that we typically have uh, quick statistics on. It's something that we need to follow over time. Not least because transport and mobility has a very important impact on productivity and the competitiveness of the economy. So you can both use it to, to increase um, the workings of your economy, but it's also a very good indicator to see where what is happening and how things are moving. So uh, it is, of course, very important also for sustainability. It's important for, for our daily lives. and. Uh, for leaving no one behind, it, it's, it's a part of our society that is very, very important to, uh, to, to know about. So today you will get an insight uh, into the European statistic, statistics on transport, both of goods and passengers, of uh, the number of accidents in the various countries, on vehicle registration, and on rail infrastructure, as well as the, the statistics at the regional level. And the transport statistics team here in Eurostat will present interesting indicators on aviation, on maritime, on inland waterways, on road, and also on rail transport. And they will show you how to also find more information. So thank you very much. And thank you, John. Thank you, Vivica, for the introduction. Uh, and as you've, you've, you've rightly said, now let's move on to the substance. Let's move on to all these interesting uh, statistics uh, in different modes of transport and passenger and uh, also conveying of freight. Uh, so we're going to move on to hear from uh, the transport statistics team here in Eurostat. Uh, I'm going to invite uh, Nikos Rubanis. Nikos is the head of the unit transport statistics in Eurostat. And I'm going to invite him to, to talk to you and also to bring his team in. And uh, let's have a look at the available statistics. Nikos, please. Good afternoon. My name is Nikos Rubanis. I am the head of the transport statistics team. And today we will present you a few um, uh, slides on selected transport statistics uh, in, for each part of the work that uh, we're doing. We will start with statistics on road freight. And I pass the floor to Annabel. Uh, Annabel, can you please uh, show us uh, the road freight part, please? Yes, thanks. Uh, my name is Annabel Janssen, as presented by Mr. Robanis. I am the data manager for road freight transport statistics. I am going to show you a few slides on my statistical domain, starting from a general introduction, indication on where to find the tables in the euro-based navigation tree, and then you will see three graphs to give a general uh, idea of the data type you can pull out from the tables. 
The road freight transport statistic data are based on national surveys of trucks registered in each member state. A European regulation covers this data collection, which specifies that the data centers shall provide us with microdata on three different interlinked tables. Information consists in vehicle characteristics, journeys performed, and goods transported. At the end of each data collection, we aggregate the values which are then published in Eurobase. It is to be noted that light trucks are excluded from this data collection, which is focused on heavy duty lorries. On this slide, you can see where to locate the road freight tables under the item transport, road transport, road freight transport measurement, as highlighted in the slide. In this annual table, which contains aggregated quarterly data in 10 kilometers by type of operation, that means the transport of one ton of goods, including packaging, uh, over a distance of one kilometer, uh, di distinguished by national, international, cross-trade and cabotage transport. Uh, with the EU total trend in red, we can observe the impact of COVID during the second quarter of, of year 2020, with the decrease of the activity. The, this transport activity, which recovered to levels even higher than before the pandemic in the third quarter of year 2020. At the bottom end of this graph, we can notice that in 2022, the overall transport activity was at the same level as in 2021. We propose different varieties of tables with many possible selections, which are not all displayed in this presentation. Some national tables display data at not three regions level for regions of loading and unloading. Our annual tables contain data by age of vehicle, axe configuration, weight capacity, NACE activity, distant classes, transit countries, etc. Our international tables are more focused, focused on the transport of goods. To explain this slide, Using the content of several different tables, the result I like that the top flow in tons transport between EU and extra EU countries was between Switzerland and Germany in 2022. As mentioned earlier, we publish data by type of goods transport in tons and ton kilometers. You can see this in this table, but we also collect data on dangerous goods with possible selection by type of cargo with palletized containers, etc. Thank you for this for your attention and uh, enjoy consulting our Eurobase tables. So thank you very much, Annabelle, for this presentation. We can continue with a few slides on maritime statistics. Uh, George, uh, can you please upload your slides? Thank you, Nico. The maritime transport domain contains quarterly and annual data. Data referred to gross weight of goods in tons, passenger movements in number of passengers, as well to vessel traffic in number of vessels and in gross tonnage of vessels. The data are presented in the eight collections that you see now on your screen at port level, maritime coastal area level, and country level. Rotterdam was by far the EU port with the largest activity in the fourth quarter of 2022 with 111 million tons of gross weight of goods. Rotterdam was the main EU port for all types of cargo except Roros mobile units. When looking at the overall annual change, only Amsterdam recorded an increase by 7.3%, whereas all other top ports registered a decrease. Messina continued to be the largest EU part passenger for passengers in 2021 with 8.3 million passengers. As you can see on the right, top right of the slide, following a significant 45% fall in the number of passengers embarking and disembarking in EU ports in 2020, when we compare with 2019 data, 2021 was more positive with data showing a partial recovery of 16%. The United States of America remained the EU's largest maritime freight transport partner in the fourth quarter of 2022 for three consecutive quarters. EU transport with the USA, the United Kingdom, and Russia combined represented almost one third of the total extra EU maritime transport. Now, when looking at the overall annual change, transport between the EU and three of the top 10 extra EU partners countries increased 
compares with the previous period, and that was Egypt, USA, and Norway. By contrast, the highest decrease was observed for transport between the EU and Russia, almost minus 30%. In the fourth quarter of 2022, the main maritime trade flow concerned inward movements of large containers from China with 14.1 million tons. The top 20 trade flows were largely dominated by inward movements of liquid bulk goods, thus crude oil, oil products and liquefied gas, with the following exceptions, large containers to and from China, rural mobile units to the United Kingdom, as well as large containers to the east coast of the USA. Crude oil and liquefied gas from ports of the east coast of the USA represented almost one third of the total transport between the EU and the United States. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, we can continue with uh, a few slides on statistics on rail, uh, and I invite my colleague Dorothea uh, to share her screen. Thank you, Nikos. So my name is Dorothea Jung. I'm responsible for rail transport statistics in Eurostat. Rail transport is a regulated data collection and it's based on EU regulation 2018-643. We collect detailed annual and quarterly data on rail freight and passenger transport for 25 EU member states where there are two EU member states, Malta and Cyprus, who do not have railways, so they are excluded here. We also collect data for EFTA in four candidate countries. The regulation also foresees regional data collection on freight and passenger transport on the NUTS 2 level, which is taking place every five years. And currently we have 2020 as the latest year available. There is another regional data collection on the traffic of trains on the rail network, which is also taking place every five years. And also in the Eurostat online database, 2020 is the latest year available. If you are searching for rail transport data in the Eurostat online database, you can find all the detailed annual, quarterly and regional data for goods under the data sets that start with rail underscore GO. The detailed data quarterly and regional data for passenger transport is listed under all data sets starting with rail underscore PA. Then we have a big data set on the traffic of trains on the rail network, which you can find under data set code rail underscore TF. And all the data sets here are listed by country. This is an infographics on rail freight transport for the year 2021. And it's comparing the performance of ton kilometers for the previous year 2020. So when you look at the infographics, you can see that in most EU member states, the transport of freight increased in 2021 compared to 2020. The leading countries here are Estonia and Spain, where freight transport increased by more than 20%. However, there are also seven countries where rail freight decreased in 2021. And this is, for example, Denmark or Portugal, where it decreased by more than 80%. Here is a graphics which is showing the passenger kilometers development for the years 2015 to 2021. For the years 2015 to 2019, one can see that the passenger transport is rather stable, whereas in 2020, there is a drop of 46%. In 2021, uh, passenger transport has again slightly recovered. 16.5%. Under this line, there is a box where we compare the four quarters of 2020 and 21 with the, the same quarter of the previous year. In this graphic, you can see for the, the second quarter and the four, fourth quarter of 2020, there is a significant drop. 
And this drop is also visible still in the first quarter of 2021, where the, the main uh, COVID precautions or precautional measures were still in place. We have several publications for rail transport statistic. We have two statistics explained articles, one on rail freight transport and another one on rail passenger transport. As I mentioned before, we are currently working on the validation and processing of the annual 2022 data. Once this becomes available, we will update these two articles. This will probably take place around the beginning of November this year. There is also a contribution for rail transport in the key figures in transport publication from Eurostat, which becomes available by the end of 2023. Some results of our regional rail data collection is contributed in the Eurostat Regional Yearbook. You can find this in the 2022 edition. So this is it for rail. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. We will continue with a few slides on inland waterways uh, by Klaus. Hello, my name is Klaus Fulmich. I'm domain manager for inland waterways in at Eurostat, and I will present in a couple of minutes uh, during some minutes the inland waterway freight transport statistics. So in inland waterways, we are operating on the basis of a regulation from 2018 which is a regulation 2018-974, which sets out the various requirements. Um, altogether, we have 17 member states um, that provide inland waterway data uh, either on a mandatory or on a voluntary basis. And we also have another one candidate country that provides data. Um, the regulation has enshrined in Article 6 that data need to be delivered um, not later than five months after the end of the reference period. Um, so when it comes to the mandatory data sets, these comprise both annual data and uh, quarterly data. So when it comes to the annual data, they refer to transport of goods by type of goods. They refer to transport by nationality, type of vessel, transport of containers by type of goods. And uh, the quarterly data, they refer to transport of goods and also to containers by nationality of vessels. Here on this slide, we can see the navigation um, tree for our Eurobase online database. Uh, here you can see where you find the inland waterways statistics. It is under transport, then inland waterways transport, and then inland waterways transport measurements. And then you see here broken down by um, annual data and by quarterly data. So this slide shows um, the inland waterway freight transport performance over the last decade up to the most recent data of 2022. And um, we see here that over the past years, the transport performance uh, was volatile. So since 2017, activities have increased and they have decreased. So and for 2022, we see here a substantial fall by 10%. Uh, and this was due to uh, low water levels in that year, in the last year. And um, what you also see here, 2022 was the lowest uh, level over the entire last decade. Um, what I can also report here on the transport performance, um, that almost three quarters, and namely 73% of inland waterway transport performance in 2022 was carried out by two countries. And these two countries are the Netherlands and Germany. Yeah, this slide here, it displays um, the inland waterway freight transport um, broken down by the nationality of the vessel. What you see here, more than half of the freight transport was carried out by the vessels registered in the Netherlands. Um, this is followed by vessels registered in Germany, then Belgium, Romania, France, Luxembourg. And you see here the category other, and the category other stands for another 44 nationalities of the vessel registration. And um, independent of the country of registration of the vessel, these vessels, they can, of course, operate internationally. 
Then uh, this slide here um, displays the um, inland waterways freight transport broken down by the product category, so by the main goods types. And you see here that by far the largest product type was the mining and quarrying products other than coal, lignite, crude, petroleum, and natural gas. So this product category alone uh, accounted in 2022 for altogether 28 billion ton kilometers. And these 28 uh, billion ton kilometers is uh, about one fourth of the entire ton kilometer performed for all products. And um, the concrete, these were exactly 23%. And you see here the second category of uh, products are coke and refined petroleum products. They accounted for 18 billion ton kilometers. And the third is the chemicals with uh, 16 billion ton kilometers. And uh, finally, to summarize the publications that we have on uh, inland waterways, we have three statistics explained articles. Uh, one addresses quarterly and annual data. This one we have updated in July, on 6th July. The second one is um, Inland Waterways Transfer Statistics by Product Category. This one we have um, updated quite recently on 8th September. And the third one is on container transport, which we also updated in September. It was on 1st September, also quite recently. And um, one more public, one more publication with Inland Waterways um, data is the annual publication on key figures on European transport. So this one for, uh, with 2022 data will be published in the next months and probably by the end of the year, we will have this publication published and disseminated. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Klaus. We will continue with a few slides on modal split uh, indicators to be presented by Boriana. Uh, good afternoon, uh, I am Boriana Milusheva. Uh, this is a presentation on model split indicators. Uh, apart from collecting uh, transport statistics, uh, Eurostat calculates indicators. Uh, they are needed to support with data important policies, such as, for example, uh, the European Green Deal. Uh, one of these indicators are uh, model split indicators. Uh, they present a share of one mode of transport in the total of all modes of transport. Uh, and they are calculated on the basis of ton kilometers for freight transport and passenger kilometers for passenger transport. Uh, the freight transport data are well available uh, as data collected uh, according to the uh, legal acts. Uh, however, for passenger transport, uh, there is there is a lack of data, uh, particularly for road transport. Uh, and as um, statistical surveys are uh, difficult uh, and expensive for the countries, estimates are uh, used instead. Uh, model split indicators uh, can be found uh, in Eurostat online uh, database uh, in the relevant uh, subfolder of model split in uh, transport domain. And there are four tables as uh, model split is calculated on the basis of five main modes or uh, only for inland modes of transport. Uh, on this screen, uh, you can see uh, model split for freight transport for the EU for a five years uh, period uh, calculated on the base of uh, ton kilometers uh, for five uh, main transport modes such as maritime, road, rail, inland waterways, and air. Uh, as it can be seen, the series uh, remain relatively stable, uh, with maritime leading with 67.9% uh, for 2021, followed by road with 24.6%. Uh, uh, if we look at the country level, a model split uh, vary, uh, varies from country to country, uh, depending also uh, which modes of transport are available uh, in the countries. Uh, this, uh, in this graph, the countries are uh, ranked uh, based on uh, maritime transport. Uh, and then on my uh, last uh, graph, 
you, you can see a model split for passenger transport, uh, again at uh, EU level for the period 2017-2021. Uh, for passenger transport, the shares are calculated based on passenger kilometers uh, for five uh, transport means. Uh, these are trains, passenger cars, motor coaches and buses, sea vessels and uh, aircraft. And uh, compared to freight transport, uh, here the, eff the effect of COVID is uh, well visible in 2019 compared to 2020. Uh, and the main reason is uh, the very strong decrease of air passenger kilometers. Uh, thus, the share of uh, air transport in model split uh, reduced from 15% in 2019 to 5.7% in 2020. In uh, 2021, it, uh, it was recuperated to 7.3%. Uh, for passenger transport, passenger cars have the biggest share of 79.7% uh, in model split and in 2021. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, we will continue with statistics on transport safety. Uh, and uh, Joanna will present us uh, a few slides on accidents in several modes of transport. Uh, hello, my name is Joanna Raczkowska and I will present uh, the transport safety statistics. So uh, data on transport safety are collected by uh, Directorate General uh, on mobi for Mobility and Transport for Road Safety uh, and for the other modes of transport by the European Commission's transport related agencies, uh, such as European Union Aviation Safety Agency, European Union Agency for Railways and European Maritime Safety Agency. And uh, our main goal is to reduce the burden for member states to for reporting the same data to different institutions. Uh, that is why Eurostat have uh, signed the agreements with above mentioned institutions so that they provide us the data and uh, we disseminate it in our database. So uh, on this slide, you can see where exactly you can find this uh, transport safety data. So uh, they are under transport, they are positioned in the subgroup called uh, multimodal data. So for each of the four modes, railroad, uh, air and maritime, uh, this data are disseminated on annual basis. And uh, you can find here uh, data like uh, number of persons killed and depending on the transport mode, also number of people injured and number of accidents. Uh, they are presented also by different breakdowns, uh, like uh, type of accidents, uh, category of persons involved, uh, type of vehicle, etc. So uh, apart from publishing the data in the database, uh, Eurostat is also preparing um, uh, different publications, like uh, key figures on transport, like statistic explain articles, news items, and also uh, materials for the social media. Uh, so here is the example of the post uh, published earlier this year uh, on Instagram. Uh, the map uh, presents the indicator on number of people killed in road accidents in uh, per million inhabitants in 2021. So uh, at the EU level, this average number is 35 people uh, fatalities per million inhabitants. But of course, it varies among the countries. Uh, the lowest rates was in Malta, Sweden and Denmark, and the highest in Romania, Bulgaria and Latvia. Uh, these posts were quite popular. Uh, there was also the discussion in the comments about this data for, for different countries. Uh, so here are some more examples of the infographic which was prepared for our publications. Uh, on the first one, you can see uh, the, some data from railway uh, statistics. Uh, uh, in the last dec decade, this number of people killed uh, has decreased substantially from, from this uh, a little bit more than 1,200 to uh, a little bit more than 600 people. So that, that is a good information. And uh, below you can see uh, the, uh, the infographic which was published just at the, uh, right now at, at the beginning of September, where you can see the distribution of the fatalities between different aviation categories. So the 
more fatalities are concerned the general aviation uh, category where you can uh, it concerns all the aircraft uh, movements different than commercial and transport and area work so all these small aircrafts balloons uh, motor, gl motor gliders and uh, stuff like that and um, of course uh, this are the, uh, especially for the aviation safety the statistics can differ from one year to another uh, this year the highest number was for general aviation but uh, if you go back to this 2015 to the year 2015 when we have this big crash of the german aircraft in the french alps uh, with uh, recorded 150 uh, fatalities uh, that in that year the, the biggest number was for commercial uh, transport and that is all from my side. Thank you very much. Uh, we will continue with uh, some statistics from uh, a data collection named the Common Questionnaire. And my colleague, Alain, will explain what this covers. Thank you, Nikos. Uh, my name is Alain Gallet. I am the manager of the Eurostat ITF UNICE Common Questionnaire on Inland Transport Statistics. The Common Questionnaire on Inland Transport Statistics is defined in common with the International Transport Forum and the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe. I, I don't. It surveys 58 countries, of which 41 EU member states or EFTA countries or candidate countries or potential candidates to EU. Inland transport means rail, road, inland waterways, and oil pipelines, but not air nor maritime. Six chapters are usually covered, of which traffic and transport measurement can be already covered by EU regulations with more details. But infrastructure and transport equipment are covered only by common questionnaire. More than 1,000 indicators are collected. So where can we see common questionnaire data? The concerned 83 euro-based tables are nearly everywhere in the four modes of inland transport. But uh, as already said, some chapters disseminate only EU regulation results or other statistical data. It is the general case for transport of goods and for accidents. Time to time, uh, there is a streamlining in common questionnaire it has a change of some indicators. Last time for reference year 2019. Our current concern is a systematic comparison and exchange of data with EU agencies such as the European Union Agency for Railways or the European Alternative Fuel Observatory. Their data are not primarily statistical, but a kind of administrative data with slightly different scopes and concepts. Anyway, the comparison helps to detect mistakes and to fill in gaps. We always try to get the active agreement of each national statistical institute. I will now show quickly two typical chapters obtained from common questionnaire, rail infrastructure and road transport equipment. In rail, the total length of uh, lines at EU level has not changed for 10 years. But there is a progressive substitution of electrified to non-electrified lines, of double track to single track lines, and still a quick development of high speed lines. Here, dedicated high speed means a maximum permitted speed is greater than or equal to 250 kilometers per hour for the main segments. Here is a synthesis with EAFO data, which allows us to already cover EU level for reference year 2022. We can see that the share of new zero emission vehicles is growing fast, especially for passenger cars and for buses and motor coaches. The share is still negligible for heavy lorries and road tractors. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, we will continue with a presentation on regional transport statistics by Miriam. 
Thank you very much, Nikos. Uh, so in regional transport statistics, we compile data at different spatial levels. The most detailed one is the so-called NATS2 level. There, the regional entities generally have a size of between 800,000 to up to 3 million people. At these levels, regional transport statistics covers data on transport infrastructure, such as, for example, the length of roads or inland waterways, as well as on vehicle stock, road accidents, and transport flows through seaports and airports. The data itself comes from two different sources, a voluntary regional data collection on one side, and data collection based on legal acts for maritime and aviation data. In general, the data covers EU member states, EFTA countries and candidate countries, depending always a bit on the availability. Uh, the data itself can be found here in Eurobase under transport. Uh, there is the folder regional transport statistics and there all the tables are to be found. To give a few examples of the data, I've compiled a few visuals. First is the motorization rate, that is to say the number of passenger cars per thousand inhabitants. As visible on the map, the number of passenger cars per inhabitant shows significant disparities in car ownership among the EU regions. The darker the color, the higher the number of passenger cars per inhabitant. Here it is important to mention that the regional rates are often linked to the economic situation, but they can also be affected by specific circumstances. For example, the highest rate uh, within the European Union in 2021 in Valle de Osta, which can, which can be seen here on the right side, in Valle de Osta in Italy, is influenced by specific taxation rules, whereas the lowest rate was registered for the small island of Mayotte, a French outermost region in the Indian Ocean. Another example is the number of people killed in road accidents. We have just seen a similar map at national levels. So this is an excellent example how the regional levels, there might be quite a bit more differences that are not visible at the national averages. Again, the darker the color, the higher the rate. So if we look at the 10, in this case, 11 regions with the most fatalities due to road accidents in EU member states, EFTA countries and candidate countries here on the right side, we find that there are two French outermost regions, three Turkish regions and three more Romanian regions, among others. Another example, quite interesting from the perspective of greening the transport sector, is the share of electrified lines and total railway lines. As um, on non-electrified railway lines, uh, diesel is often used as fuel. So looking uh, at the railway infrastructure at country level in EU member states, Again, here on the right side, there are significant differences among countries with respect to the share of the network that is electrified. Uh, Luxembourg with 97% is the highest. Sweden, the Netherlands, Bulgaria, Italy, Austria and Portugal are all above 70%, which are the highest rates in the EU. While on the other side of the spectrum, Ireland and the Baltic states are the EU member states where less than 20% of the network is electrified as of 2021. Nevertheless, when looking at the map, it is also visible that the differences at NATS2 level within a country can be quite significant. There are, for example, countries with an overall high electrification of rail infrastructure, but at the same time have regions that where the share is below 10%. These are the very light yellowish uh, areas on the map. The gray spots on the map show that data is sadly not always available. Regional transport statistics is, as mentioned in the beginning, a, to a large extent, a voluntary data collection. So we're very thankful to all the countries providing us data. This is it from my side. Many thanks. And back to you, Nikos. Thank you very much. Uh, we have one last presentation today, a few slides on aviation statistics to be presented by Anna. Thank you, Nikos. Good afternoon. My name is Anna biawas motel and I'm responsible for A-Transport Statistics. Collection of A-Transport Statistics is based on the Legal Act, regulation of the European Parliament and of the Council, put into force in 2003. So this year it celebrates its 20th anniversary. In 2022, around 820 million passengers were carried in the EU 
when we compare the number of passengers transported in 2022 with previous year, we can immediately see big increases for all reporting countries. While the number of passengers increased in the EU more than twice, for some countries the increase was much bigger. When we look at the monthly data of 2021 and 2022, we can see similar trends through the years. Lower number of passengers in the first quarter, then quite dynamic increase, reaching peaks in summer months, and then decline towards the end of the year. In 2022, the strongest increases were recorded from March to July, when the number of passengers increased from over 35 to almost 95 million. The biggest decrease was recorded between October and November 2022, with minus 27%, with slight upward trends in December. Transport of freight and mail by air was not hit by the pandemic very badly. The drop by 13% in 2020 to the level of 2014-2015 was quickly recovered in 2021, overpassing the level of 2020 by 21%. In 2022, there were almost 14 million tons of freight and made loaded and unloaded at EU airports, so it dropped by around 8% compared with 2021. We can also monitor what is happening in air transport by analyzing the number of commercial flights. Because of the pandemic, the biggest drop of more than 90% was recorded in April 2020 compared with April 2019. The recovery trend since then has been clearly visible, especially with the summer peaks of July and August. Between July 2021 and 2022, the number of commercial flights increased by 84%. In July 2023, the number of commercial flights was only 9% lower comparing with July 2019. More data on air transport can be found under transport section a transport domain. More analytical text, graphs and maps can be found in the two statistics explained articles in, in our annual and ad hoc news items. A transport data are always presented in Eurostat flagship publications like Key Figures on Europe or Regional Yearbook. If you look for methodological information, you will find them in the reference manual and also in the metadata section. Thank you very much. So I would like to thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank all the presenters very much, my colleagues. Uh, we have presented uh, several slides uh, and there is much more, as you have heard, on the online uh, database covering each mode of transport and then uh, statistics on regional level, accidents and indicators. Uh, I think with this we we gave a, a, a more um, general view on, on what transport statistics at Eurostat uh, contain. And uh, we are really uh, happy to answer uh, any questions. So I hand it uh, back to John. Thank you very much, Nikos. And uh, it's great to meet, meet the team. Uh, to really see uh, those colleagues who are working with these detailed statistics and the richness of the offer, which of course, as Nico said, is actually even greater if you have a look at our database. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce now a chance for questions uh, and uh, answers from us. And indeed, uh, we will be joined, uh, Nikos and I, by uh, another colleague, uh, Evangelia Ford Alexandraki or Ivi. Welcome, Evie, to our little panel that we have here on the screen. And uh, I'd like to remind everybody that uh, you can still ask questions. Some of you have been doing so already, but you can still ask questions in Slido if you want to uh, explore uh, uh, any topic that's been raised. And here you have the, the, the details if you've forgotten them. So please put your questions in. Uh, but in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll, I'll go through the questions that we've already received. So let's uh, let's kick off with a, a question uh, about train kilometer data. Um, 
do you collect train kilometre data for different categories, for example, long distance, regional, high speed? Uh, and I think this one is for Evie. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you very much, John. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, we, uh, co we collect uh, train kilometre data um, under our regulated um, data collection uh, for uh, rail transport. Uh, and this is for uh, passenger trains and for goods uh, trains. Um, however, we don't have uh, a breakdown in high speed or other categories. And also we don't collect it at uh, regional level, so it's mainly at, uh, at national level. Uh, we also collect uh, train kilometer data uh, in, um, the, under the common questionnaire, Eurostat ITF and UNEC uh, common questionnaire you heard about. Uh, they are also for uh, passenger uh, trains and also for goods trains. So we have a good collection on uh, uh, train kilometers, but not uh, uh, we don't have data on uh, with a breakdown. Uh, at regional level, we collect every year, every five years for one year, some information on segments, rail segments, uh, but may basically it's train movements, not really train kilometers. Thank you. Back to you, John. Uh, so thank you, Evie, for answering that one. Uh, we have a second question then uh, related to waterway freight transport, which we heard about in the presentations. Uh, where is the data coming from for waterway freight transport? Evie, please. Yes, thank you very much, John, again. Um, so data for inland uh, waterway transport um, are collected and compiled mainly by the national uh, competent uh, authorities. Uh, which is the national statistical offices or the ministries. Uh, but the original data and the sources are mainly um, national administrative authorities, uh, such as registers, registers of vessels, where we, uh, they can get a lot of information, uh, national port authorities, where they collect data on traffic, uh, or inland waterway operators themselves. Uh, in addition, uh, a lot of countries use uh, the service called River Information Services, uh, for collecting data. And this is um, a system where information uh, services on inland navigation uh, supports uh, traffic and transport management in uh, inland uh, navigation and uh, transport uh, on inland waterways. Thank you, John. Thank you again, Evie. Uh, the questions are coming in, so please keep sending them in, uh, everybody. Um, so we've got uh, a third question here, which is, uh, 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 is there any data available on the transfers between the individual modes of transport, for example, urban transport, intercity train, bus, plane, and so on? Um, perhaps I can turn to you, Nikos, for this one, please. Yes, indeed. Um, the transport statistics system is based mainly on modal statistics, so we collect statistics for individual modes, and we do not follow the, uh, the the movement of individual goods in changing modes. Having said that, there is uh, there are some exceptions. For example, uh, we're trying to use innovative methods in uh, in some country with uh, projects that we support uh, to to find, for example, where containers go and how after they arrive, for example, in in big ports like Rotterdam. Uh, after, uh, at the, uh, similarly, we do the same for passengers. So for passengers, we have uh, financed and, uh, and we have published statistics on the transport of people, so passenger mobility surveys. Uh, and there we have much more detailed information on, on trips and how people are moving uh, along changing modes the number of stops, the number of different means, means uh, used, and also the purpose of, of their movement. However, passenger mobility statistics are quite uh, expensive because they require dedicated surveys uh, rather than using administrative data which are already collected at national level and we collect and, and, and they send to us. So um, it is a passenger mobility surveys we we um, usually support in at national level every four or five years and and some information is published on our uh, statistics explained section.
Thank you very much, Nikos, for that. Um, we've got a, a fourth question here on my list, uh, which is uh, really a, a very relevant question. Do, do you collect data also on taxi, ride hailing or shared mobility? I think that connects with the answer you just gave us, but uh, please, could you elaborate on this? So this is uh, also covered periodically under the passenger mobility surveys. Uh, however, Eurostat uh, is trying to develop uh, ways to evaluate the impact of digitization and the digitization has an impact on transport as well. Uh, so as a first step, we, we are contacting, we have made a list of uh, platforms because all this shared uh, mobility uh, is based on, on apps and, and uh, digital platforms. Uh, and we are planning to, to see whether we could get uh, more information directly from them rather than going through the usual uh, system that David described earlier, that means national statistics uh, offices or ministries. Thank you very much, Nikos. So um, we, we still have questions coming in. I really encourage you because we have time. So uh, th these are all interesting topics. Um, so let's uh, look a little bit about COVID. That, that was mentioned quite a lot in the, in the presentations. We could see lots of, of issues with transport during COVID, of course. So the question is really about transport mode during COVID. Uh, could we please perhaps share some, some figures on, on the impact, so the COVID impact on the transport mode? So I think, Nikos, this will come to you as well, please. Yes, I do have some figures in, in mind. I can say that uh, air transport as also sold by EVI. So the number of commercial flights and the number of passengers decreased dramatically to almost uh, zero. So minus almost 95 or 98 percent during the COVID period. Uh, the latest statistics, which uh, refer to, to last summer and even last month, show that uh, Europe has, uh, the European Union has recovered uh, from COVID and we are below 10%. Uh, uh, we are 10%, be, be less than 10% below the, the pre COVID period in terms of uh, number of flights and number of passengers. Uh, I think also train, uh, we have seen that also uh, passenger transport by train has uh, was uh, heavily reduced and this also has shown recovery. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, the goods transport was uh, less affected uh, by, by the COVID, uh, in particular the good transport by, by ships and, by, and even by trains and road. So, uh, that's that's what I can think of uh, right now. Oh, thank you, Nikos. So, uh, I mean, you're absolutely right. We could see that uh, that impact across uh, several different types of transport, of course, as you rightly say. Um, we have a question on uh, electric vehicles, which, of course, are becoming more and more prevalent on our roads. We can see them passing by. So um, is there any data on electric vehicles by country? Uh, Evie, perhaps I'll, I'll pass that one to you, please. Yes, thank you, John. Uh, yes, we have uh, uh, this year we published two new tables on actually what we call zero emission vehicles. And the biggest part of these vehicles is electric vehicles. Uh, so uh, we collect mainly a new uh, registrations of uh, zero emission vehicles and it's all published on our website. Uh, and some uh, for some gaps uh, uh, we have from uh, countries, we also use <coughs> data from um, from the European Alternative Fuel Observatory. So our tables are complete. We have data for 2022 uh, published uh, this uh, summer uh, as um, figures, as absolute figures, and also as shares of um, uh, in the total fleet of uh, new, actually the total number of new registrations. And our um, uh, task also now, our um, ambition is to collect also data on fleet on zero emission uh, fleet, not only new registrations in the year to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Evie, for that. Um, now, uh, of course, when we publish statistics, we also publish this, this metadata, which explains the statistics. And we have a question about whether it's possible to have more detailed metadata, more detailed explanation uh, in Eurostat's uh, dedicated section. Uh, Nikos, perhaps you can take that one, please. 
Yes, indeed, we, we, we were planning to do that. Uh, a new dedicated section is ready and it will go online in the coming weeks. Uh, it will be structured instead of this single page that we have now, it will be structured by data collection. So it's we have nine data collections along the lines that you of the presentations uh, today. Uh, each mode of transport will have a dedicated uh, part with links to metadata, to uh, questionnaires, uh, definitions, uh, and also data. So we, users can go through this uh, channel, users of transport studies can go through this channel uh, to find uh, what, uh, what is available uh, by mode and by data collection. So I think that will simplify the, the work of the, of the users. That, that's very good news, Nikos. So we can look forward to even more information uh, about the statistics here. Um, there's a question on uh, road uh, accidents data. Uh, would there be a breakdown in the data on the characteristics of the drivers, for example, age, whether alcohol is involved, what was the vehicle type, etc. Um, so uh, perhaps uh, I could uh, turn to Ivy and ask, ask you uh, if you could address this one, please. Thanks. Yes, uh, thank you, John. Um, yes, indeed, uh, um, actual uh, our um, source of data for accidents, which is the care database, uh, includes quite detailed breakdowns also of um, reasons. Let's say we call alcohol, for example, or for accidents. Uh, however, we do not publish this data, but we have data uh, on accident by age and by uh, different uh, vehicle uh, types and we publish such data, but not for the reason of the accident, uh, if it would be alcohol, for example. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yubi. Um I've got a couple of, of questions left before we start to move into the into the closing phase. Um, so um, there is a question uh, about uh, do you have data in terms of volume, tons or containers per intermodal terminal? Uh, Nikos, perhaps you can have a look at this one, please. Yes, so we do publish an article on the transport of containers by mode, uh, but not by intermodal terminal. So um, I think that uh, that you can find in the statistics explained section uh, and and then uh, the modes which are covered are um, basically uh, inland uh, inland modes, but uh, also maritime. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nikos. And uh, the final question is really looking to the future or what future predictions can be made for the amount of transportation for different transportation methods, uh, both in the EU and and in the question it mentioned specifically Ukraine as well. Um, so uh, do we have any predictions at Eurostat? So perhaps uh, Nikos, you could answer this one, please. Uh, we don't really make predictions. This is the work of our policy services, which they are using our data in models and models work with di different scenarios. Uh, and this modeling is, is available mainly on the site of, of Digimove. Uh, however, I think that one, one prediction uh, is evident that uh, the amount of transportation is very much linked to economic development. So, um, and this is also why transport statistics are good and quick indicators of economic uh, development as, as well as opening of the EU market uh, and reducing barriers for transport uh, of goods and passengers between member states, but also uh, across the continent, including, uh, including countries like Ukraine. Thank you very much, Nikos. So uh, we've we've dealt with the the questions, and I'd like to thank Nikos and Evie very much. One, uh, John, oh, please sorry. go ahead, Evie. Please well, go ahead. Another note, just to say that uh, all information you had today and uh, much more uh, can be found in our annual publication, Key Figures on European Transport, uh, published last year for the first time. Again, it will be published this year, and uh, it will be an annual publication. You can find all interesting information and figures and data uh, about transport statistics. Thank you. Hi, thank you, Evie. That's important to know, uh, putting everything together in one place uh, to get a really good overview uh, of all the data. So thank you for reminding on this. Thank you both. Thank you also to those uh, from the transport statistics team who we saw earlier and participated in the preparation. 
and also to our audience for joining us. Um, we have, uh, we have, will have a short survey on Slido if you've got a couple of spare minutes just to give us some feedback. So we'll have this uh, in in a, in a short survey. Um, of course, if you have any further questions, any burning questions that come to you afterwards, uh, you can certainly contact our multilingual user support for uh, anything, and uh, we will post the address in Slido now so that you can see where to go if you can think of new questions or issues that you'd like to bring. So uh, that's the end of our event today, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we do have uh, a couple more events coming up, a couple more webinars coming up. So in case you're interested in job skills, uh, we'll have a session on the 27th of October. And if you're interested in unemployment statistics, then 9th of November is the time when you can tune in to that. So once again, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you to the colleagues here in Eurostat, and I wish everybody a good rest of the day. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.